So over the past few years in Hollywood, around the world, I guess, in uh, Western territories, we've been seeing a dramatic shift in films where you're seeing a lot more minorities as being front and center. Crazy Rich Asians being among the more popular of them, and then uh, Black Panther, another one. And here we've got Blinded by the Light. Recently we had the other one, the Beatles one, yesterday. yesterday. We've been seeing more and more of these lately. This is from IMDb in 1987. During the austere days of Thatcher's Britain, a teenager learns to live life, understand his family, and find his own voice through the music of Bruce Springsteen. What we've got here is a, a young Muslim boy who falls in love with a white artist, and obviously that becomes a, a weird thing for his family, particularly his dad. He's so profoundly touched because it speaks to him on some kind of deep visceral level that is almost indescribable, and it completely changes his whole life and improves his life. In a very dramatic way personally, but in terms of his family, it becomes a bit of a, a source of contention. But uh, it brings out the best in him, I would say. Yeah. It's basically a coming-of-age story about an immigrant boy in an immigrant family. It's set against the backdrop of Margaret Thatcher's 1980s Britain. It was rife with unemployment and racism. Yeah. And all of that stuff that he has to go through, plus trying to find his voice while still keeping to his family values, but finding where he can go outside of the lines and where he can grow and where he can do his own thing and live his life. I think that a lot of Asians in general who are living in Western areas can very much relate to the difficulties that our main character goes through yeah. in this movie. I mean, if you had an Asian mom, an Asian dad, or both, oh boy, uh, <laughs> and you're living in a, in a Western territory, you, you there's this like immediate conflict that comes into play because you've got your environmental influences when you're outside of your home, and then you've got your environmental influences inside your home. Yeah. And those usually are at odds with each other. And I'm sure you you even have Asian families experiencing this in Asian territories, like in India, for instance. I'm sure that you have some people who love certain things that are Western, and it's just not the most welcome thing in the house. I mean, I ran into this in a small way the other day when I was reviewing Baby, and I was talking about how it would have been interesting to see this ending where the wife leaves him instead. There's a lot of people saying the same exact thing, which is, that wouldn't happen in India. And I was like, whoa, like, divorce is just not a thing over there. I mean, not not the way it is here, where right. it's like love every, everywhere. You can't throw a stone without hitting someone who was, uh, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I've had my, my fair share of nasty breakups, which I, I feel like are, you know, almost the same as divorce, although it's not. That's an aside completely. All I'm trying to say is, you know, you run into these cultural things as a, a young person in today's age. You've got these different things influencing you, and when it deviates from something your parents ha really, really want for you, it can create a lot of problems and tension. Yeah. You know, and that's what this movie very, very much explores. Well, at least that's the objective of the movie. I feel like it, it could have explored it even deeper than it did. I think that the film got a little saccharine at times, for my taste, but overall, I really enjoyed it. There were two unquestionable cries that I had in the film, and I was trying to hold back. I was trying to, when I was watching it, I was like, don't let it do it, and I focused on a different part of the screen. I literally had to make myself look away from the center because that's where all the action was happening because I didn't want to cry. But it's still like, I had tears streaming down my face. I'm like, no, fuck you, movie. I'm not, <laughs> and it got me. And it was twice. It, it was twice in the film it got me. But there was a lot of moments where I was like, this is a little too sweet for me. It's a little bit too much, too much smiling, a little bit too in the realm of fantasy. But overall, I think that Gurinder did a great job of telling this story and moving me. It was a very moving story, and it was also delightful. I actually enjoyed a lot of those fantasy elements, although I could see how sometimes it can be a little bit jarring because it goes from being very much, you know, this is real life into this fantasy musical segment, and it's like, oh, we're doing that now? But I, I just went with it, and, and it was fun. Personally, I am not that familiar with Bruce Springsteen. I want to I want, I want you to continue that thought in a second. I just want to respond to something you said. Okay, go ahead. Because you're saying the fantasy thing, right? And it just wasn't a clear delineation from reality to fantasy. And I think that's where my issue right, was. Right, yeah. Like, in a typical musical, you see a very clear delineation between this is normal story and here's heightened musical situation. Right. And But this film didn't do that. It felt like, no, all this is still... Oh, no, wait. And then 
you realize only three minutes in, no, this has been a fantasy thing. That's where I got thrown off. Anyway, you're saying uh, Bruce Springsteen, you weren't familiar with him. Yeah, I, I mean, I am familiar with who Bruce Springsteen is and, you know, he's the boss and that. But personally, I didn't really listen to his music, so I wasn't as familiar with a lot of the songs and the lyrics, but it is really interesting to me that this whole story is based off of how one musician from New Jersey, America, can speak words that really speak to the heart of these, well, not just um, our lead, Javed, mm -hmm. but also his friend, Roops. You know, two immigrant South Asian boys living in Luton, not the nicest place, I'm sorry if you are from Luton, and having his words resonate with them because this human experience is universal. I think that's the idea. And that's a really lovely sentiment. This movie was uplifting right. and emotional. I definitely cried at least twice, if not more. Well, off of the starting thought you had with this, I wasn't very, very familiar with Bruce Springsteen myself. It's not music that I, I was ever introduced to by my dad. Um, it wasn't something that people mention. It's like you hear about the Beatles, you hear about Aerosmith, you hear about the Eagles, you hear about a whole litany of people. Bruce Springsteen is the last person that people have ever mentioned to me, ever. <laughs> and so the first time I paid attention to Springsteen, not his music, but just the man himself, was because of Steve Jobs with his biography, the book that was written right after he passed away or while he was you know on his way out. And then mm -hmm. right after he passed away, this book came out. I read that book. He talks about Springsteen and how much Springsteen inspired him. There's a, a quote from the lyric, times they are a change, and that's something that like came up a couple times in the Steve Jobs book. That's the only like familiarity I have with Springsteen besides this movie. I can see why it wasn't as uh, impactful as these other artists that I mentioned. I get the lyrics though. His lyrics do have meaning. They're, they are deep, and I, and I do appreciate that because I think one of the issues we have with pop music in general is a lack of depth in lyrics. I like to say that about today's music, but in general, that's just how it's been for a while. Sometimes people are just trying to rhyme shit, and it's it's not really about meaning. Whereas right. Springsteen, it seemed like he was always trying to inject meaning into his lyrics, and I could see why that resonated with the main character, Javed. All that being said, his music didn't touch me the way it touched the main character. And, yeah. and that made it a little bit harder to get into the adventure. I was like, cool, yeah, I mean, I, I get why he likes him. I recognize that passion because I've had it myself where I've become obsessed with like one artist. I mean, I do that today where even with YouTube, like I'll, sh you've caught me, like I'll, I'll latch on to one person in particular and I'll just totally get invested into that one person, whether it's music or YouTube videos or whatever, it, you know, it resonates with me. And I feel like a lot of us have been there. The level of passion he, ex he had for Springsteen, I'm like, I don't know if that many people have experienced that. That, and, and that is super, fan level. Yeah, but I haven't gone to that level, but I've, I've come close to it. I bought the same album from a particular artist more than once just because the second time it had his art book in it. It was Rob Dugan, which no, no one knows who Rob Dugan is. I'm like one of like one of 5,000 people that follow him on Twitter and he follows everybody back because he knows that. The thing about it is like Rob Dugan's music was so touching for me that it was the only music I could listen to for a year, a year straight. I'm like, everything else like his was the only thing I could I could put on my, my ears and so like uh, that was cool to me like seeing that and recognizing you know th something from my youth in that regard in the film you're seeing these Europeans treat brown people like crap like yeah. crap it's about rising up above all the crap and that's one of the things I really liked about this movie it gets saccharine at times but overall I like the message and I like I like where it took me emotionally and I thought that Vivek Kalra who played Javed did a wonderful job. I thought his acting was pretty nuanced and I felt all the things that he was feeling. Did you have an issue with I did. the smiling and yes. stuff? Yeah, I mean, there were times where I was like, okay, I feel like in this music segment, he's really trying hard to smile a lot because that's what's happening. It's very happy and stuff. But not that. Okay. That's not what bothered me. Okay, well that's the only time that I noticed that, but otherwise I thought that he was really lovely. Before I forget, all around, wonderful cast. I think everyone for the most part did a great job. There was one actress in particular that bugged me a little bit. I'm not gonna say who because I don't wanna like Yeah. It may have just been me not liking her and because of other reasons, I don't know. But there was only one actress in the entire film that bugged me, but everyone else, like, for the most part, I thought this was a wonderful cast. So what bothered me was in certain areas of the movie, just regular dialogue, Javed was smiling a lot, like, like a lot. I'm like, what are you smiling for? Like, it was the beginning of the movie, for instance. He meets, he's meeting up with his best friend. Mm -hmm. I see my best friend, I'm like, hey, what's up, man? 
pat, pat, you know, dap, whatever. We're not smiling like, like as if we haven't seen each other in 20 years. He lives literally two houses from the guy. It's smiling to the point that it's like, it's saccharine. It's just like, what are you smiling at that level for? Calm down, guy. And that happened a couple times with random things in the movie, and I'm like, okay. Obviously, it's a nitpick. Most people aren't gonna notice that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was listening to everyone talk about the movie. Once we were out, everybody loved it. Yeah. You know? Oh, and I am part of that. Everybody no, I, <laughs> loved the movie as well. I wouldn't say I loved it. I would say that I very much enjoyed it. I like where it took me, but it's not a film that I would say I can say I love because I don't know that I would watch it again. I would definitely recommend it to people. Yeah. Um, I think it's definitely worth your time if it's piqued your interest. If it's, if it's a playing in your area and it's piqued your interest, I say it's worthwhile. I have no intention of ever revisiting it. However, I do have every intention of visiting this director's other work. For me, I think I like it enough that I would want to watch it again, and I may watch it again when it comes out over the weekend. That's what I think, anyway. I thought it, I thought it was really lovely yeah. and very, very feel good. And there were lots of little moments that I thought, if you're from the culture or if you have Asian parents or immigrant parents, there are certainly moments where you're like, yeah. I get it. Yeah. You know, like they, they really got those moments down very well. Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Do let us know your feelings if you had a chance to see it, if you have any interest in seeing it. Um, and yeah, that's it for now. Check out Achara Kirk on the social media, the Jabster if you feel like doing that. Subscribe. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.